We are here. We are the Pleiadians, a collective of energy from the Pleiades. We have a long history. Our ancestors came from another universe that had achieved completion, a universe. You are simply working on a planet coming to completion, and we are here to help you with that task. This completion or transformation has been heralded by many for eons. It is an important time. What happens on Earth now will affect the entire universe. Our ancestors were some of the original planners of Earth, orchestrators who seeded worlds and civilizations with creativity and love. Because of their qualifications, they like to orchestrate worlds just as conductors love to conduct. Our ancestors are also your ancestors, and we like to call you our ancient family, as indeed you are. Our ancestors gave their DNA to the original planners, and this DNA became part of the DNA of the human species. A transition is about to occur, a dimensional shift, that will lessen the density of the third dimension so that you will move into higher dimensions in which the body does not have such a solid state. You have come here because you wish to master the evolutionary process and be able to live with it. This is going to be very exciting because it means that you are going to function in many realities. There are multitudes of cultures and societies that exist throughout the vastness of space. And these societies and cultures have been on and off this planet from the very beginning. It is not just that we, the Pleiadians, have come to assist. We are only one grouping from one star system. There are many who have journeyed here for many reasons. The majority of the extraterrestrials are here for your upliftment, though there are also those who are here for other reasons. You are magnificent beings members of the family of light, and you come to Earth at this time on assignment to create a shift, to make a change, to assist in the transition. Love is the key. Love is what makes up the universe. The present technology on Earth will only develop to a certain extent because mankind does not yet understand that love is necessary. Energy can take all forms of creativity but when one is dealing with greed or hatred or any emotion that is not working towards light, one is only allowed to go so far. There is only so much information that is available to that sort of vibration. Love is the basic building block, so when one has love, all possibilities exist. Bringing back the concepts of light, which are information, and love, which is creativity, is the plan. It takes renegades like the family of light to come into a system that has been primarily dark for eons and change it. It is a vast plan you are participating in. All of you jumped at the chance to be here in such a challenging place at such a challenging time. You were certain you could do it. Also, you were told before you came here that there would be much assistance and that at different junctures of your development, different entities would present themselves upon the planet in different capacities to trigger you, fire you up, and remind you not to do it for you. We are one of those triggers, a catalyst. When you hear the name Pleiadians, you feel a connection because we are assisting you in bringing your own information, your own knowing, forward. We, the group that speaks to you, are intending to fill our own resume with some interesting experiences. When we first began speaking in 1988, our collective consisted of 50 to 75 entities, some physical, some non-physical, all Pleiadian. Our numbers have been growing, and our collective now consists of well over 100 entities from many different systems. We can now be called Pleiadians Plus. There are those in our reality who do not believe that we can accomplish what we have set out to do with you. They feel that we are taking too many chances and too many risks, yet they are sitting on the edges of their seats to see what will happen. 
We are here to assist, to teach, and to evolve as we go through this process together. We give our version of things only to bring you into higher consciousness. We do not wish to say that this version and only this version is how it is. This whole teaching is designed with a great purpose in mind, and the stories that we tell you are set up to take you to a higher plane of consciousness. That is our intention. We wish to throw out ideas for your consideration. We wish to encourage you not to get stuck on any one idea and also to embrace what you are hesitant about or are fearful of. Realize that when you face the so-called dark portions or shadow portions of yourself, you are creating an opportunity of liberation for all concerned. This comes back to the first and final tenet, thought creates. No matter what situation you find yourself in, it is the power of your thoughts that got you there. It is also the impeccable belief that thought creates that will transform your experience and the planetary existence. You yourself chose to be here. You are on assignment to bring memory forward and to bring the value of human existence back to the forefront of creation. You are needed. You have been in training for this assignment for lifetimes, and you did not come unprepared. All that you need to know now is inside of you, and it is your task to remember your training. This is not a lifetime when you are going to be taught new information. As we said before, this is the lifetime when you are going to remember what you already know, and we are just here to remind you of it. That is part of our assignment. Humanity is an experiment. Humanity has been designed, as has just about everything else that exists within creation. Prime Creator began experimenting with creation a long time ago in this universe for the purpose of greater self-exploration, self-gratification, and self-expression. Prime Creator brought energies and essences of life, extensions of itself, into this universe and endowed those extensions with the gifts that it had. Prime Creator said to these extensions of itself, Go out and create, and bring all things back to me. This was quite a simple assignment, was it not? These extensions of Prime Creator, which we will call Creator Gods, went out and began to experiment with Prime Creator's energy as it existed within themselves. They began to create their own hierarchy, which in turn created other hierarchies. Each succeeding hierarchy created another hierarchy to endow it with its own essence and to assist in the development of this universe. Eventually, in one of the galactic systems, a plan came together to design Earth as an intergalactic exchange center of information. It was an incredible plan. Earth was a beautiful place, located on the fringes of one of the galactic systems and easily reached from other galaxies. It was close to many way portals, the highways that exist for energies to travel throughout space. Some of the creator gods were master geneticists. The master geneticists designed various species, some human, some animal, by playing with the varieties of DNA that the sentient civilizations contributed to make Earth into this exchange center of information, this light center, this living library. The original planners of Earth were members of the family of light, beings who worked for and were associated with an aspect of consciousness called light. Light is information. The family of light created the information center they had conceived of. They designed a place where galaxies would contribute their information and where all would be able to participate and share their specific knowledge. Earth was to be a cosmic library, a place of incredible beauty that experimented with how information could be stored through frequencies and through the genetic process. The project of the living library on Earth was eventually fought over. It looked enticing enough to be owned by some. During Earth's early history, there were wars in space for ownership of this planet. 
skirmishes took place, and earth became a place of duality. Certain creator gods who had the right to do whatever they wanted, because earth is a free will zone, came in and took over. When the skirmish occurred, a certain group of entities fought in space and won the territory of earth. These new owners did not want the native earth species, the humans, to be informed of what took place. Uninformed, the species would be easier to control. That is why light is information and darkness is lack of information. These entities beat out light and earth became their territory. These new owners who came here 300,000 years ago are the magnificent beings spoken of in your Bible, in the Babylonian and Sumerian tablets, and in texts all over the world. They came to earth and rearranged the native human species. They rearranged your DNA in order to have you broadcast within a certain limited frequency band whose frequency could feed them and keep them in power. The original human was a magnificent being whose twelve strands of DNA were contributed by a variety of sentient civilizations. When the new owners came in, they worked in their laboratories and created versions of humans with a different DNA, the two-stranded double helix DNA. The original DNA pattern was left within the human cells, yet it was not functional. It was split apart, unplugged. Within human cells are light-encoded filaments, fine gossamer threads of energy that carry information. When these gossamer threads are working together like a cable, the way fiber optics works, they form the helix of your DNA. When you were rearranged, you were left with a double helix. Anything that was unnecessary for survival and that would keep you informed was unplugged, leaving you with only a double helix that would lock you into controllable, operable frequencies. We, as Pleiadians, came back through time into what would perhaps be called our past in the vestige of representatives of light. We came back in order to share a frequency with you, a frequency that each one of you has agreed to carry on this planet in order to change the DNA of the rearranged human race. The plan to change the frequency modulation affecting the human species entails the rebundling of your DNA and of the light-encoded filaments. Earth is assisting, in its own way, the evolution of the universe. It is where the plan begins to blossom and what happens on Earth is going to affect many, many worlds. Your DNA will evolve from two helixes to twelve helixes. These twelve helixes correspond to energy centers or chakras inside and outside of your body. This process is an incredible evolutionary leap for one to be involved in, and it is going to take place on an accelerated path for the next twenty years. There are those who have already received a realignment of the twelve strands of DNA, the twelve helixes. These twelve spiral strands of DNA interact with one another in the body and outside of the body. The connection of the twelve strands means that the twelve energy or information centers can begin to function and send information back and forth to one another. When human DNA begins to rebundle as a 12-stranded helix system and this information is acted upon, there will be incredible power. Individuals, simply by coming together and jointly intending what they want, jointly becoming a telepathic receptacle for energies from all over the cosmos, will change the face of the universe. There will be a merging of identities, a merging of cultures, an infusion of many new world orders, and there will be much chaos and confusion. As members of the family of light, you can simply observe this, knowing that chaos and confusion must come to break down the system so that it can be rebuilt with light. 
as members of the family of light, you can understand that there is an evolutionary process taking place and that those who can handle the changing frequencies by all means will evolve. There are many misconceptions about the idea of godhood. The universes are full of intelligent beings who have, over time, evolved and developed all sorts of capabilities and functions to serve their needs to express themselves creatively. The importance behind existence and consciousness is creativity, and creativity takes many forms. Eons ago, Earth was but a thought in the mind of great beings who had set before themselves the task of creating new forms of existence. Many of these beings affected the creation of this universe, and you have termed them God. In actuality, they were extraterrestrial, light-bearing energies far removed from Prime Creator. We rarely use the term God with a big G. If we were to use that term, we would be referring to the entity we know as Prime Creator. Prime Creator, in its own personal implosion through love, endowed all things with consciousness. All things are Prime Creator on Prime Creator's journey. The evolution of consciousness and the ability to house information is what allows one to come into the proximity of Prime Creator. Many people on Earth have felt that they have merged with God. They may have merged with a portion of Prime Creator that best suited their vibration at the time. The total vibration of Prime Creator would destroy the physical vehicle in an instant because it cannot house that much information. Those that represent God to you are but a minute portion of Prime Creator. The Creator Gods who have been ruling this planet had the ability to become physical, though mostly they exist in other dimensions. They keep Earth in a certain vibrational frequency while they create emotional trauma to nourish themselves. There are some beings who honor life before everything else, and there are also beings who do not honor life and do not understand their connection to it. The Creator Gods are space beings who have their own home in space. They are also evolving. Before the takeover, about 300,000 years ago, many of the original team worked here to bring information and create this vast information center that was to be used to connect many galactic systems. Then there was a great war among the Creator Gods, and the space beings, whose stories are in the ancient manuscripts of this planet, won the fight. They came here because they wanted this place for many of their own reasons. In Prime Creator's universe here, all things are allowed. Because all things are allowed, many lessons are learned. Who are these beings who came in and rent asunder the original plans for Earth? Who are these space beings we sometimes refer to as the dark t-shirts? These space beings are part human and part reptilian. We call them the Lizzies because we like to make things a little less emotional and a little humorous so that you don't take them so seriously and get so upset. We are not here to frighten you. We are here to inform you. Some creator gods created life just to have it take care of them or meet their needs. They have fed off your emotions. One of the big secrets that has been kept from you as a species is the richness and wealth that accompanies emotion. You have been steered away from exploring emotion because through emotion you can figure things out. Your emotions connect you with the spiritual body. The spiritual body, of course, is non-physical, existing on the multidimensional sphere. Within the Lizzie population, there are those who are benevolent and those who are malevolent. Why are we telling you all this? Why do you need to know it? You need to know it because the Lizzie reality is re-entering and merging with your dimension. You must make 
feast with them and merge with them to create an implosion of the collection of your soul. In this way, you can come back to Prime Creator. There have been many other Creator Gods, only some of which have had human form. Presently, your greatest state of unrest or discomfort comes from beings of a reptilian type of existence because they seem the most foreign to you. It has been our intention to expand your ideas of who your gods are because those gods will be returning to Earth. That is why the planet is going through such great turmoil. As you learn to hold the frequencies coming from the creative cosmic rays, you will be prepared to meet these gods. You must understand how to discern the extraterrestrial energies. This is a free will universe, so all forms of life are allowed here. If an energy attempts to frighten you, manipulate you, or control you, it is not an energy that would be in your highest interest to work with. You have a choice of who you work with. You are living in a most important time when energy is coming alive. The gods are here. You are these gods. As you awaken to your history, you will begin to open your ancient eyes. These are the eyes of Horus, which see not through the eyes of a human being, but from the point of view of a god. They see the connectedness and purpose of all things, for the ancient eyes are able to see into many realities and to connect the whole picture, the whole history. When you open the ancient eyes within yourself, you will not only be able to connect with your own whole personal history, you will be able to connect with the planetary history, the galactic history, and the universal history. Then, indeed, you will find out who your gods are. Once upon a time, there were beings who wanted to create something. In order to do this, they needed to go in and very subtly change a part of creation. These beings worked for, were associated with, and carefully guarded an aspect of consciousness called light. At different times, these guardians of light met and worked together and crossed paths in the different realms of reality. They planned, they shared blueprints, and they designed a time when their plan would go into effect. These beings had a plan to prepare for the time when that light would fit. These beings are you, and that time is now. The time has been carefully orchestrated, and each of you knows, in the deepest portions of your being, that you have come here for a purpose. The purpose, of course, is for each individual to become sovereign and for the planet to unite. Not everyone is going to make the shift. Everyone is not in the vibration that wants to work in harmony at this time. There are those on earth who will feel as if they are in states of ecstasy when they find what they think is a new authority, a higher authority, a new paradigm, animal gods, or whatever. So, the family of light, as it has infiltrated and penetrated this planet, is going to create its own planetary sphere, its own Earth. Over the next number of years, those who come from the skies may not be members of the family of light. They will be the mirror of those upon the planet. We have said to you that your lesson is authority, to become your own authority, and to stop giving over your decision-making process to governmental people or parents or teachers or gods. It is time for the people of Earth to become sovereign. You are beginning to feel what may be coming. It is an awesome task to carry light. Once you put it in your body, there is no stopping it. There is no saying, I quit the light team. I won't be recognized as a member of the family of light. Some of you may want to do this sometimes, but once light is there, that is it. Many of you who have studied 
and used your own discernment will be shocked and appalled at the foolishness and ideological worship that the rest of the human race will express toward certain beings from space who pass themselves off as your creators even though they do not have bodies that look like yours. They will be able to do many things and will share many technologies. They will perhaps cure certain diseases that they helped create in the first place by teaching germ warfare to your planetary scientists. Oh, dear humans, you are in for such an adventure, and only you can carry this adventure out. When you begin to live all that we teach you, to trust identity, to trust synchronicity, to trust being a part of a plan, then you will find that even in the midst of great calamity and incredible odds, you will be able to defy the laws of humanity. All of this is to be felt. Allow your brain cells to click into being without your rational conscious mind wanting to define things down to the most minute detail. This experience involves raising a feeling inside yourself, and then, one day, at one moment, in one afternoon, having an overwhelming sense of knowing, having a composition of a thousand pages long come alive in five seconds of divine ecstasy. You hold the history of the universe within your physical body, what is occurring upon the planet now is the literal mutation of your physical body, for you are allowing it to be evolved to a point where it will be a computer that can house this information. Before you came into the body, all of you committed to designing events that would fire your codings or blueprints, that would activate your memories. Then you came into the body and you forgot all of you have had your blueprints and coatings fired to some extent because you understand that there is a divine purpose or divine plan that you are a part of. The firing of the coatings and the realization of your identity are going to become phenomenally intense. The reason for this is the evolving DNA. When you have 12 helixes of DNA in place, those helixes will begin to plug into the 12 chakra system. The 12 chakras are vortex centers loaded with information that you must be able to translate. You are evolving yourself even when you are not on the planet, and you are perhaps more involved with other identities of yourself. You have to become super beings in whatever reality you enter because, as members of the family of light, the branch of renegades, this is your forte. You purposely came to this planet to give yourself such a challenge so that you could be defiant, not in a way that would give you problems or create disharmony, but in a way that would create harmonic defiance. Through your harmony, you are defiant toward the old vibrational frequency. The present evolutionary system, designed by the Creator Gods to step you up in number of dimensions or frequencies, is based upon the evolution of the twelve helixes that correspond to the twelve chakra centers, seven within your body and five outside your body. This is simply the way the system plugs in. Some people will be functioning with the twelve helixes within a short period of time, while others around the planet will not receive this shift until later in the decade. This is simply because each individual is coded to be given the frequency when they are capable of integrating it. Many are already having a difficult time integrating the changes at this early stage of the plan. A large majority of the humans on Earth have convinced themselves that there is only one reality and there can be no other. This could be the downfall of the human race. As the helixes come into full force in a person, there is an awakening of the person's inner knowledge, knowledge that goes beyond what the person has been taught. This inner knowledge is knowledge of self, knowledge that says there is much more than this physical world. Believe it, know it, understand it. There are multitudes of chakra centers, and there are multitudes of potential helixes that can form. 
right now, the common denominator with respect to the number of helixes and chakras that the consciousness of humanity can handle without destroying itself is 12. So we are dealing right now with an involvement of 12 helixes to plug into the 12 chakras. As mentioned before, seven chakras in the body and five chakras outside the body. The seven chakras in the body are not too difficult to work with because if you allow yourself to feel, you can physically touch and locate all of them. The first three are the chakras of survival, sexuality, and perceptual feeling. The fourth chakra is the heart, center of compassion and connectedness to all things. The fifth is the throat chakra, which relates to speaking. The sixth is the third eye, the vision. The seventh is the crown chakra, which opens to the knowing that one's identity goes beyond the physical form. When you get to the five outside of the body, you must begin to find new ways to figure out what is going on with something that you don't even know for sure is real. The eighth chakra is within your realm of activity. It hovers 12 inches or more above your head. Most people keep the eighth chakra center close to their physical body. The ninth chakra is close as well, within a few feet of the body. Once nine helixes are formed, this chakra will move out into the atmosphere of Earth to become more of an Earth chakra connecting into the grid work. It is a link. The tenth, eleventh, and twelfth chakras are much further out. The tenth chakra, once it is in line and plugged in, will be in your solar system. The eleventh chakra will move out into your galactic system, and the twelfth will be located and anchored someplace in this universe. You will receive information from these personal centers, for they are collective centers as well just as your other personal chakra centers are collective centers. As you learn to translate the chakra experiences, you will discover that life is not the same anymore. As you explore your current body, identity, and lifetime, do it quickly. You do not have years to study them. As the information in your DNA is retooled and replugged in, you will be able to feel how the events from this life connect and blossom and have a thread of purpose with many different places that you have lived and many different identities that you have occupied. You are not alone. You could not do this alone. Even when we say to you that you are the standard bearer of your soul, there are other aspects of yourself that have figured the story out and are coming back into your time period to create this vortex of energy that is going to affect all realities. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of these times and the excitement and joy of what they hold, as long as you are willing to change. <laughs>